NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. The Cedars is a great restaurant with outstanding Mediterranean food. The Cedars takeout menu is second to none, featuring pizza, stromboli, hoagies, their famous lamb on the rod, and so much more. So when you're hungry and you want that Newcastle taste, make it Cedars. Now with two locations in Newcastle, 827 Addis Street on the east side and 1101 Highland Avenue. Call Cedars East, 724-658-9260 or Cedars North, 724-652-7657. RNA Screen Printing Newcastle is the place to go for signs, shirts, hats, vinyl lettering, embroidery, magnets, vehicle lettering, banners, window decals, and they can put your design on many items. They have decals for vehicles and signs for all your advertising needs. Great selection of sizes and styles are regular or glitter t-shirts. RNA can iron on a logo while you wait and can do any school logo. RNA Screen Printing, 1217 Moravia Street, Newcastle, open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Call 724-652-22. 41. The Beanery Depot and Deli. Coffee, made to order subs, snacks, and more. Meatball sandwiches, fresh and hot. Pepperoni rolls, fish sandwiches, chicken, milkshakes. The Beanery Deli. When you're hungry for something special and it won't cost you a lot of beans. Welcome to the Cedar Sports Corner here on NC TV 45 and NC Radio 450. I'm James the Value Man Dotson. He's Alex the Saint Delavers and here to bring you all sorts of sports talk, fantasy football, local sports, national sports, anything sports. That's why we are here. Alex, how's it going? Uh, it sounds like you're, uh, is your heartbeat come back down yet? Uh, a, a little bit. Uh, our producer thought it'd be funny to pull a fast one on me as soon as I walked in the door. And uh, as soon as I walked in the door, started talking about how Pitt gave up, uh, what, six, <laughs> Pitt gave up 61 <laughs> points. Well, listen, so we're talking about how the Pitt-Syracuse game was the highest scoring game in college football history. Whatever. I mean, I'm not, that just, that's just such a Pitt thing. But anyway, uh, we were talking about the players Pitt's going to be losing next year. And our producer's like, oh, don't forget about your head coach. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, your head coach is gone, too. And I'm like, ah, very funny. He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, no, for real. And he's like, you want me to pull out my phone? Angelo, look, he doesn't think it's serious. Yeah. So me being a typical, you know, pessimistic, heartbroken Pitt fan, I believed him because I am a Pitt fan, and that's the kind of thing that happens to Pitt fans. I mean, well, that'd be the fifth or sixth head coach they've lost already. I mean... In the last eight, nine years? Yeah, I mean, am I wrong for thinking that, though? I mean, that happens. That, that, that happens. That is completely believable. I, I wish it was April 1st, because that was, that, that was brilliant. Very good. Uh, Friday is a very important day, and I'll tell you why when we get later on in the show. We'll get fully into the entire college football landscape, uh, for sure, coming up uh, in one of our later segments. But we want to start with the bread and butter here uh, at the Cedar Sports Corner right now. We are the Fantasy Football Toolkit. We want to bring you some fantasy football news and advice and everything we can. And the place we have to start, I told you, I told you guys, I hope you went out and listened. Tyreek Hill was a huge pickup for Kansas City, and man, did he pay off. He actually became the first player since 1965 to score both a rushing receiving and kick return touchdown on the same game if you went out and got him and played him like i told you to kudos i hope you won your game as a result i think people were really hesitant on committing to him long term because you think when is jeremy macklin going to come back probably this week but he, here's the thing i think the way he's been playing and i think it's what four out of the last six weeks he's scored in double digits uh when someone's that hot a coach usually finds a way to keep them in the game plan. So I even think long term, I think uh, Hill's really solidified his spot going forward with the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, playoffs are coming up. Um, I definitely 
am advising to keep him on your roster, uh, considering how thin wide receivers are, or running right. backs are right now in general. I don't know why you really would, but you know, even going forward, I think this Tyreek Hill guy is going to be a really solid fantasy player for years to come. Yeah, the, the little guy, and you know, maybe the new coming of a Wes Welker type player that we really haven't seen much of, honestly, in the past couple of years, but. I mean, averaging seven catches per week over the last three weeks. And yes, Macklin does come back, so it would not surprise if the uh, numbers came down a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, you said it, Alex, can you really take a guy out of the lineup, mm -hmm. whether real lineup or fantasy yeah. lineup, when he puts that kind of numbers up? Yeah, well, I don't think it's not, it's not necessarily just what he did in one game. It's the over a span of six weeks, Right. you know, that that's a big enough sample size to know that he's going to be a contributor. Now, someone else we're going to talk about, Tyler Boyd. And for the majority of this year, Tyler Boyd was not someone you could start. He was not a startable player. And myself, I picked him up in later rounds in a few of my drafts, expecting him to do more. So I went ahead and I released him. And I know he had a pretty big game last week, but... Uh, Jimmy, I'm not picking him back up. It, it, it's tough because with A.J. Green gone now, he's going to be more in the game. And yes, two weeks ago he had his first touchdown of the entire season. Uh, 54 yards that week. He had 62 yards this past week. Nothing spectacular, nothing really you know, you know, know, earth-shattering by any stretch of the imagination. I, th I think there are better options out there. I think you're right. Now, I would say this. I would not be hesitating to possibly pick him up if you're in like a dynasty league, for example, and he's available, or if you have a um, a keeper league, for example, then maybe you can pick him up and use him as a late round keeper because I could see him being a, a potential keeper pick for next season. That's the only way I think you're picking him up right now. Again, if you have somebody who's injured and you have a spot, okay, snag him and maybe you'll get lucky for uh, championships. But right now, in terms of Cincinnati's offense, um, it, it's really it's Tyler Eifert or nobody. And uh, you can also say Rex Burkhead. He's going to get the Gio Bernard touches, but it's still not enough for either one to really warrant, uh, unless you're in dire straits, um, to, to go and put them and plug in your lineup. Yeah, and I think I really like what you said about, you know, if you have a keeper league, he's someone you look at because – uh, I really haven't noticed until this year how many leagues really set limitations on keepers. I'm in one league where our commissioner lets us keep four players, but it cannot be before round seven. So round seven to 14 or whatever, you're allowed to keep four guys. So if you're someone who wants to uh, lock up a late round pick because how many late round picks never pan out? Right. Uh, a lot. So Tyler Boyd would be a definitely a good pick uh, and also you see keeper leagues now too where they make you charge extra money to keep your players so that's actually something we'll talk yep. about in future shows is some of the different maybe ways to spice up your fantasy league for future years uh, that'll come up in the next couple of weeks here as we head into the holiday season now that we're uh, quickly entering December. Before we hit our first break, which we are also quickly uh, coming up towards, I want to mention a couple quick names. Uh, running back Kenneth Dixon of Baltimore. I know he's in running back by committee out there, but he was out there for 50% of the snaps. That's about as good as you're going to get in Baltimore. He's worth picking up, to be honest. He's had the best snap rate. He had 50 yards last week, and he's playing a very vulnerable Miami defense. I thought Miami's defense was going to be stellar these past two weeks against two very mediocre teams from California, and they got torched by both L.A. and Frisco. I, I think that's uh, saying enough right there. Dixon needs to go. Yep. I, uh, I, every time I hear the name Dixon lately, mm -hmm. you know, ever since the pick coach left, but, uh, you know, that, that, I'm, I'm, the whole – Angelo got me traumatized as soon as I walked in here. Um, but, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm not banking on a, a running back from committee and a Baltimore player. But, you know, going up against a vulnerable Miami defense, you know, if you're weak at your flex, well, not it, if you have to do, he'll do. Another one quickly, Tyler Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel, I'm sorry, in Atlanta. Uh, two touchdowns last week, 70 yards. Anybody can have the big week, whether it's going to be Gabriel, Sanu, Julio. You never really know what to expect, but he's, again, somebody who you can plug and play uh, when you need to. With that, we're up against the break. When we come back, we're going to answer the big-time question in terms of your waiver wire pickups coming up, possibly. What do you do with Adrian Peterson. That's when we come back here, the Fantasy Football Toolkit here on the Cedar Sports Corner. Come to Big Polly Sports Bar in Newcastle. The place is spacious with all the seating you'll need with two bars and a huge menu that features wings, pizza, sandwiches, burgers, pasta, and fries. 
Big Polly's is just right to watch the game. You'll love the sports memorabilia throughout the bar. There's plenty of parking, too. Big Polly's Sports Bar in Newcastle at 207 East Long Avenue. Call 724-658-8800. That's 658-8800. Gentlemen, if you want to look your best with high quality clothing, then I recommend Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors in downtown Newcastle. Mike Caggiano is the owner, and he and his staff have been in the business for decades, and they will always give you the right recommendations. They also carry Rondinelli tuxedos. That's Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors, 210 East Washington Street, downtown Newcastle. Call 724-652-3851. Welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner here on NCTV 45. Fantasy football toolkit coming at you. Um, during the break, we were talking about my frustration with a uh, certain pro football team, not to mention the name, <coughs> Atlanta Falcons, but um, and how I don't want to touch any of their players because they seem so inconsistent. However, uh, with the New York Jets, a big name is coming back this week, a Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I want to know, Jimmy, how does that affect uh, Brandon Marsh and Marshall's value? How does that affect uh, any other star players they have, Forte, whoever? Yeah, Forte, I mean, he's pretty much he's fighting for a, getting a contract because he's in trade negotiations. So I think Forte is going to be uh, really, really big. And I should say either trade negotiations or just New England seems to be talking with Forte for – uh, possibly a signing in the offseason. So I think uh, he's playing to try to uh, get the Jets to re-sign him right now. So Forte, no matter what, is good. But in terms of the quarterback, anybody is better than Price Petty. I'll tell you what. So Price uh, Petty, what a uh, name. Yeah, so I, I really think that uh, Fitzpatrick coming back, as much as people love to hate on the, on the man from Harvard, I really think he makes Brandon Marshall fantasy starting material again. I don't think he was. What? Don't be petty. Don't be, so, don't, don't be petty. Don't be petty. You know what's worse than being petty, though? Is being Hackenberg. <laughs> and that's the other quarterback on that Jets roster who has not gotten a chance in the NFL. Oh, man, and, I forgot about him. And I'm not surprised that Christian Hackenberg is not getting a chance. And people are saying, why doesn't he get a chance? you got to show something in practice. Talk about practice? Practice? Practice. Playoffs. We'll talk about playoffs. We'll talk about fantasy playoffs coming next week because that's when the uh, main playoffs uh, begin. Uh, but we wanted to talk about that. We also wanted to say Adrian Peterson. He's back on the practice field. He may be back, but we don't know when. When is the right time, Alex, or what is the right situation to go and pick up a guy like Adrian Peterson who's been out since, what, week two or three at this point? I'm not, I'm not playing him. And honestly, it's... Even before this season, you know, you wonder like age or injury concerns, and now he's, you know, now he's finally coming back for the first time since week two. Unless he's a full go ahead, 100% healthy, ready to go by every media outlet type of thing, I'm not starting him. And even then, I'm trying to see who, who else I could possibly start on my uh, starting lineup. So, I mean, how. How effective is he going to be after being out that long? I don't know. You got to worry about the rest of the Vikings backfield. You know, chemistry. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. Well, and nobody, even when AP was healthy before he went down, and then nobody who's been in the backfield afterwards has been a consistent threat in the Minnesota backfield either. So, I I, I will say this. I think I'm picking him up. I think I'm stashing him on my bench because if I can all of a sudden get a free agent turn starter, and that starter has the initials AP. Hmm, that could be championship gold. At this point, I have a couple guys on my bench who I'm not going to be playing. I know I'm not going to be playing. Whether it's a backup quarterback or a backup tight end, that sort of thing, I'm not going to play him. Why not take the risk and see if this guy who has proven he can do it year in, year out, you know, give myself maybe that option, I guess. What I, what I do agree with, uh, with what you're saying is, you know, you could pick him up, have him on your roster, and, yeah, if – it looks like he is going he is catching fire if he is playing with momentum yeah that can be all the difference you know you're going into your playoffs you know so you know picking up uh, Adrian Peterson out of free agency you know 
that's definitely going to help your team come to playoff time if he's playing hot and if he's ready to roll. So, yeah, honestly, that does give you a very significant edge in terms of, you know, you winning your uh, fantasy football playoffs. Absolutely. And those playoffs coming up, most leagues begin their playoffs starting next week, week 14. And how crazy is week 13? We still got bye weeks this week. Wow. It's those, those, you know, honestly, I want to say this now. You're probably going to disagree with me. I never paid much attention to bye weeks when I drafted. Um, I know you haven't. But this year, I don't know if it's just I got unlucky or just the way my the cards were dealt to me. Every week, it just seemed like I had a handful of starters on bye. It's just like I never had that happen to me before in any mm -hmm. fantasy season. And it's really really inconvenient really frustrating so, so are you saying you're going to look at him more next year i am there you go see Com commandment solved commandment yeah so <laughs> there it's probably not going to be an all be all but you could really fall into a trap like me i really should have been more attentive when i was drafting and noticed seven guys out on week eight you know mm. what i mean so uh it is something you do want to at least keep an eye on Absolutely. Uh, with that, let's switch gears. Before we do, a reminder that you can always send us your fantasy football questions. We love answering them uh, week in, week out. Mr. DeLaverson has been heavy on the tweeting this past week uh, on Twitter, at 3SNFantasy and at FFToolkit. You can send them all to us right there, and we answer them all, and normally we're pretty darn good. So come and give us everything you can. Uh, let's switch down a gear. We're going to talk football here quickly in college level before the break. First off, congrats to those Pitt Panthers who still have Coach Pat Narduzzi, as far as we know. Yeah, uh, for, now. for now, they have cracked the top 25, which I think really helps Penn State, who is number seven, and they will be playing for the Big Ten Conference Championship uh, this Saturday against Wisconsin at Indianapolis. The top four, Alex, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, and uh, Washington are the top four. Michigan's at five, Wisconsin at six, Penn State seven. So Big Ten has five, six, and seven uh, in terms of the last guys in, or right out, I should say, on the bubble. Alabama, no matter what, even if they lose, which isn't going to happen, they're going to be in. Ohio State doesn't play. I think there's no way that they're not in. The question ends up being Clemson, who lost a pit and has looked bad in many other games this year. Will they stay in? They play Virginia Tech in what is a very winnable uh, championship game. And Washington, who is in the Pac-12 that's been you know, crapped upon all year, now you got to say, are they going to, with a championship, uh, would they still be in? Or does the Big Ten champion in uh, Wisconsin or Penn State, do they possibly jump in? What are you looking at with that? I think... Um Pitt making the top 25 college football playoff rankings does help both Clemson and Penn State. It makes the Clemson loss to Pitt not look as bad, and the same thing for Penn State. I just don't understand why Ohio State has to be this automatic they're in the Final Four. If Here's the thing. How can you exclude a division winner from the Final Four, but a team that didn't win your division gets into the Final Four. Um, I think I'm okay with the fact with Ohio State getting in as long as the division winner from the Big Ten gets mm -hmm. in as well. Um, I mean, they especially lost to when, Especially when they beat that team. That's the thing that I think gets me. So. That, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like Ohio State has like this, this name brand thing. Ohio State, they got to be in. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but honestly, I think that is going to be your Final Four. I think you're going to have... Uh, Clemson, Ohio State, Washington, and uh, Alabama. So I don't mm -hmm. see much changing, but I am uh, rooting for Penn State, obviously, to uh, you know get the upset of Wisconsin. Oh. And who knows? Maybe they can mm -hmm. find a way in. Yep, we'll probably not. We'll, hey, we'll see if they can do uh, if they can make things very interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that and about more chaos at the high school level as well. Here when we come back on the Cedar Sports Corner.
If you want to score big, then get over to Shenango Auto Mall. George Fiaco, General Sales Manager, and his experienced staff will be glad to talk to you about all the amazing used car deals from their huge inventory. Lifetime powertrain warranties, extended warranties, and guaranteed credit approval. They have a body shop and full detail shop. It's not your normal used car lot. They also buy cars, trucks, and SUVs. Shenango Auto Mall is located at 2515 Elwood Road in Shenango Township. Call 724-698-7300. The Branding Iron Bar and Grill, a great place to gather. Some examples from the menu, 45 cent jumbo wings with 30 different kinds of sauce, meatball sub and fries, 550, hot cheese balls and burgers, and delicious large sandwiches. Stop in during happy hour, 430 to 730. You can dine in or take out. The Branding Iron Bar and Grill is located at 2221 Ben Franklin Highway, Edinburgh. Call 724-658-1210. Back here on NCTV 45, the Cedar Sports Corner alongside Alex DeLaverson. I'm James Dotson. Special thanks to Angelo Parada helping us out, spinning all the dials back there, making sure everything, making sure we sound good. We can't make us look good. There's really not much you can do unless you put a black screen in front of us. But I know. Yeah. I, not exactly the two prettiest mugs in all of Newcastle, but, but what yeah. are you going to do? I, I mean, there's a reason that he put us in front of the camera, though, We I need guess. Gregor here to make this place more handsome. Well, hopefully Greg the Mad Scientist Bashir <laughs> will will be back coming up uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, we want to talk real briefly here a little bit more about the uh, college football scenario. Um, championships coming up on Friday. Friday. we got a couple of Friday issues coming up here. Um, the first championship game is on Friday, Washington. If they somehow lose that, I think that's what really opens the door for, uh, for the Big Ten champion to possibly sneak in. We've seen it before, though. A couple of years ago, TCU was number three, didn't play the final week. They dropped all the way to six. Mm -hmm. There's nothing saying Ohio State can't do that. And, I mean, here's the thing that really gets me. If they want the best teams, or do they want the most deserving teams? And, it, and what do you consider mm. the best? The best throughout the season or the best right now? Because if you're telling me that, Washington has been up and down all year. Clemson, honestly, has been putrid for more of the year than not, but they've snuck out victories. Penn State's got seven wins in a row, and they've looked very convincing in them as well. So that's the questions I think the committee has to go with. And when they put so much emphasis on conference champions, Alex, how can then they go and say, well, okay, conference champion, no, but the team you beat in your conference, yeah, they can go. Yeah, and that's that's actually still the problem with only having a four-team playoff. That's what you're going to get. Um, I think the committee is going to look at a best team right now type scenario because they have always have. Yes. Or, you know, the BCS was always like that. It's, you know, if you lose one game but it's towards the end of your season, then you're less likely to get into the college football championship. I do like that. It's no, not as much about the when you lose. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... I I would like to think they would go with the four best teams. I mean, who's to say it's deserving? Because you lose a you lose one game at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. compared to it at the last. That means you're more deserving or less deserving than any other right. team. I don't. The one thing I will say is I'm glad that they're looking at you know the circumstances of the losses. Was it home? Was it on the road? Were you at full strength? Like. For example, Penn State's loss against Michigan, missing many of their defensive players. It's not going to throw the loss out the window, but that's a big part they're looking at is who was there, who wasn't. Two losses on the road. Who did they lose to? At Michigan. At Pitt. And now Pitt now lo Yeah, now looking at it, those are not two bad losses at all, especially since uh, you know Pitt beating Clemson, making it into their first college football playoff ranking. It's... If Penn State beats Wisconsin, I mean, they're right up there with anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. it's they haven't lost a game at home. I mean, remember the beginning of the year, we were talking about if James Franklin could have survived this season. Yeah. Now we're talking about them possibly playing for a national championship. I, I will say this. If Wisconsin wins the Big Ten championship, then Ohio State's the only Big Ten team that's in the Final Four. If Penn, if Penn State wins it, I think in terms of everything that they've said that the playoffs are going to be and the selection committee is going for, I think that they're going to have to be in there, to be honest, just based on uh, prior precedent and everything that they've you, been said. But you, I've you, been wrong before. You give the college football committee way too much credit. This I is true. I, I don't trust them. Barry Alvarez is on the committee, Washington, or, uh, Wisconsin's athletic director. So, <laughs> you know, keep that No in bias mind. there. No, not at all. So... A uh, couple of the championships are on Friday. What else is going on Friday, Mr. Parada? Well, it's 
time to put up your dukes. Your, the I duke came. Ears. I've got you both stunned. You're looking at me. But it's the city game mm -hmm. where the Dukes of Duque take on the Pit Panthers. Can't believe college basketball is getting up and oh, running. You, you know, I do want to say something about that real quick. All of a sudden, this is a very meaningful game. Um, Pitt beat Maryland last night. And right now, what are they, 6-1? and one? Uh, Kevin Stallings is bringing a whole different type of uh, style of play to the Pitt Panthers, high scoring games, but also giving up a lot of points. It's literally a 180 from Dixon. Yeah. So a lot of fans are going to like this. And the reason why this is a big game, when you have a new coach, every game is a big game, even when you're playing out of conference. Yeah. And honestly, I do want to see the city game get more attention than it really has. I think Duquesne and Pitt should Duquesne be a keeps bigger going. Rivalry. Duquesne keeps improving as well. That, so. that, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, uh, that this is a game that's very underlooked, I feel like, because Duquesne can beat Pitt. When you have a new coach, you know, they're very Anything's prone possible. to upset. Yeah, so um, I'm actually really glad you brought that up, to be honest. I wanted, I wanted to shift gears. Get you guys ready for basketball season. Oh, uh, we're going to be ready. Be, you know, oh. We'll be we'll be huge in in terms of basketball talk as we go through the uh, college season, especially as we get up to March Madness. Then you'll uh, you'll wish you hadn't said that is what I'm gonna say. Because, How's Penn uh, State hoops doing this year? They got a very young team. They had three guys all come from Roman Catholic, all playing as freshmen. Um, they're gonna be young. They're gonna be raw, but they're gonna cause some trouble because they're a fast team, a tall team, an athletic team. So uh, keep your eye on them. And they still got Shep Garner, who's a just prolific scorer. So. They'll be normal Penn State. They'll be like a, a team you don't want to face in the Big Ten tournament because it could be an early exit, but they won't be consistent enough throughout the year. They did beat Georgia Tech in the ACC Big Ten Challenge last night, though. It seems like they really upset people. It's like they never have the best season. They take away the 2010 season when they had Taylor Battle and they made the tournament. It's like they have okay seasons, but they are the one team that you really don't want to play because they'll upset right. you. They beat Ohio exactly. State. Uh, remember the Michigan State game we were at a few years ago? That was a fun wow, game. Wow, six years ago. Oh, my God. But we're old, Alex. I know. Uh, but I am actually really excited about college basketball. How about Jamie Dixon and TCU? They're doing really well. All of a sudden, he's recruiting great. Four-star <laughs> players. You know, that... Uh, who saw that coming? Yeah, funny how that works. It, it is what it is. Sometimes you just need yeah. to change. We'll have a lot more college hoops uh, talk and high school hoops talk once that begins coming up uh, in the next week. we got about a minute left, and we want to bring it down to the local level real quick, get a couple quick congratulations out. First in the Shannon Lancers making it to the Class 2A championship game. Ran into the juggernaut of Steel Valley and got to see up close and personal just how good those Ironmen are. Uh, but still a great season and a great career for a couple of those seniors, Frank Antoano, Danny Welker, Sean Doran and company, Ty Sear. Uh, very proud uh, as a former Lancer. Great job there uh, for the season. And uh, you, you made Lancers across the country tune in and watch f football, which hasn't happened very often. And now the Ironmen, as a result, get to take on the other team from the county. Wil the Wilmington Hounds, and uh, congratulations to Coach Terry Varelli. Win number 300 last week when they defeated Kane. Now they're into the state semifinals for the eighth time uh, in school history. If they're going to beat them, they need to do what Nishanik didn't do, and that's to run their misdirection running offense. So when you have the medal with over 1,000 yards, uh, Cam Merritt's at 904, uh, Slicker's at about uh, 850, use the balance, use the misdirection, and you will put points up against that uh, Seal Valley defense. It still has not given up any points before the mercy rule has been in effect. So good luck to you guys. That's on Friday as well. We'll be cheering you on here from NCTV 45, the Cedar Sports Corner. I'm James Dotson alongside Alex DeLaverson. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. Funding for this program provided by Washington Center Physical Therapy, Norm A. Gabriel, MSPT, ATC owner.